my name is Matthew. Some people call me Pastor Matt, and we have the opportunity and the privilege and the honor to lead this amazing spiritual family called Blueprint Church, and where we believe that we exist to help people discover their design for their life, discover God's design for their life. And what we believe is that when you discover that design, when you discover that design, when you find a place where you can belong, when you find a place where you can become more like him, that you will build a big life that will eventually change the world. So what you're coming in here today, it is not just a church. It is a spiritual family. It is something. It it is a community that when we talk about our dream team, we're not like family. We are family. We do life together. I'm going to preach here in a moment. But if you didn't get anything that I say, just know that here at Blueprint, things change. Here at Blueprint, you come as you are, but you will never leave the same. Here at Blueprint, God is going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. And speaking of that think that we have hit capacity for the second service in a row. <laughs> Some of y'all over there in the balcony and in the sides, y'all mad at me like, man, I couldn't even get in the door. So let's do this. If you have an empty seat on your row, if you could please scoot in a little bit, because I think more people are coming. If not, it's all good. Um, but I just want to tell y'all, thank you. God has been doing some amazing things. Are y'all ready to have a little church. Oh, y'all got to do better now. Y'all ready to have a little church? All right, bet. Let's get to it. Um, Genesis 50. Genesis 50. Genesis, the 50th chapter, the 20th verse. Genesis is the first book in the Bible if you're looking for it. <laughs> if you are anywhere towards Matthew, Mark, go back. It's right after the table of contents. Genesis, the 50th chapter. Y'all look amazing. 20th verse. Lord, you got to help me today. It's 11 o'clock service. going to take me out, y'all. If you only knew Genesis, chapter 50, the 20th verse. It's one verse. And I'm going to say it like this. It reads, you intended to harm me. But God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. Father, help me to preach this in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I want to talk to you for just a few. Y'all got it on the screen. Look, we fancy. Um, I want to talk to y'all just for a few minutes, not too long. On the subject, it couldn't be easy. It couldn't be easy. Now, let me go ahead and set just a little bit of, 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 of house rules, right? Because everybody, majority of people are new here. And so we're a new church. You may not know how we do here at Blueprint. Listen, we're real people. We're having real encounters. We're authentic. You ain't got to show up fake. So we are a holler back church. So, Leo, what that means is that when you hear something good, you need to shout something back. You feel me? We... That's how, hey, come on, that's how we do it. Listen, so we are a hollerback church. We're a free church. We are an authentic church. And what God has been doing today has been blowing our minds. It has been something that we could not believe. You'll, that'll make sense to you later. But it's been something that we could not believe. God has literally blew the doors, not only off of this place, but off of our minds. And so today, y'all have no idea the amount of warfare, the, the amount of uh, uh, stress and struggle that has come our way within the last 48 hours. When I tell you that I am a, uh, my team might argue with this, but I'm a pretty organized person, right? I try to plan, I try to prepare, <laughs> I try to do these things, and I have been working on this sermon for, they laughing at me, <laughs> for a long time, and I could not figure out what God wanted to say because I'm not somebody who believes that you just preach because you're good at it, just preach because it sounds good, or just preach because it'll make people shout. But I believe that as a pastor and as a preacher that every opportunity that you get to touch a mic or get to be in front of the people of God, that it is not me getting to speak, but is a word that he wants to give to other people. And so that means I steward it well. Everybody on our staff, if you get to preach, if you get to teach or minister or even pray in front of people, it is not for show. It's not performative. That's never going to be what we're about. We believe that what you do when you get up to be here, it is a privilege. It is not something that you should lust after. It's not something that you should be happy about. It's not something that you should have a burden or a desire for, but it's something to be obedient and submit to. Amen. Amen. So let me tell you something. So I have been working. I have been praying. I have been crying, almost cussing. I have been doing a lot of things. Trying to get this word together, figuring out what God wanted to say. I stayed up till three o'clock in the morning. I see some of y'all when I said almost cussing, y'all almost walked out. (laughs) 
Let's be a real church. Some of y'all cussed on the way up here. <laughs> I didn't say I did. I said almost. But what I'm saying is that so I was up till three in the morning trying to figure out what I want to do. I, I had these notes on my paper and I'm like, OK, God, I feel like this is where we're going to go. I feel like like this is what you want to say. You want to tell your people about how it's bigger than me. You want it's not just me, but it's bigger than us as a church. It is bigger. What you want to do is bigger. And God kept saying, no, I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off. I went to bed at three o'clock in the morning with nothing on my Google Doc. I woke up this morning at six trying to pray. My wife came downstairs and I was almost hyperventilating. Because I sat here and I was saying, God, I have no idea what it is that you want to do. And I'm just being real with y'all. What is it you want to do? And at 9.07 this morning, 23 minutes before the first service, God gave us this text. So can I walk through this for the next about 15, 20 minutes with y'all? Okay, let's do it. So there was a man named Joseph. Somebody say Joseph. Okay, y'all act like y'all know him. We can call him Little Joe, right? So there was a man named Joseph, and, and in the Bible, in Genesis 50, this is him talking, but he's not just talking to anybody, he's talking to his brothers. He's talking to, not, not, not just like his partners or his homies, who he calls his brothers, he's talking to his biological brothers. They all had the same dad, different moms, we ain't gonna go there. <laughs> But listen to what happened is that they had the same dad. They had different moms. And Joseph was having a conversation with his brothers. But from, for Genesis 50 to make sense, you have to understand Genesis 37. So let me back up about 13 chapters. In Genesis 37, we see a young man named Joseph. He's a young boy. The Bible said he was about 16 to 17 years old. He, he, he was the second youngest in his entire family. And what happens here is that Joseph says that he had a dream. Somebody say dream. Y'all learning already. We had talk back church. So listen, so he had a dream and this dream wasn't his own. This wasn't his own ambition. What he had is that God had given this to him and he was sitting there and Joseph being a young lad, a little arrogant. He was favored. He had a, he felt a little something about himself and he sat there and he came to his brother's pastor baby. And he said, he said, Hey, yo, 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 check this out. God gave me a dream. He said, in this dream, we were doing everything we do every day. We were walking in the fields. We were getting grain. We, we are picking th things up and we are putting them in the bundle. We are tying them up. But at some point in time, my bundle jumped out of my hand and it began to stand up on its own two feet. And then your bundles of all my older brothers, y'all came to my bundle and y'all bowed. And the Bible tells us in Genesis 37, it says, and his brothers hated him all the more. Now to understand why they hated him, I talked about how he had older brothers and they had different, they had different moms, same dad, is that Israel, who was used to be named Jacob, when God changed his name, we're a Bible church too, so just follow me, I'm going somewhere. There was a dad, there was a man named Jacob, his name was changed to Israel, he had 12 sons, the second to last one was Joseph. Joseph was the first one that was born to his favorite wife. Y'all don't, don't get no ideas about having multiple wives. He said it was born to his favorite wife. And he was born in old age. So Joseph was favored for two reasons. Say two. Okay. The first one is that because he was given and he was born to his favorite wife. This wife had been barren for a long time. She was trying to conceive and it could not happen. She was infertile. The Bible says that she was literally unable to conceive children. And so even because of that, she went and found a handmaiden and a servant. And she said, please, just so I can have babies, please, please sleep with him so we can produce a, a, an, an inheritance. And what happens is later on, God blesses her womb. Joseph comes out and then Israel looks and said, God, you have been faithful to me. Can I speak? really, really quickly into your lives. For some of you, you look like your life has been unproductive. It looks like God is not going to do anything. You've been waiting way too long, but now is the season for you to start producing in areas where you've been barren. Y'all don't need to miss that. Some of y'all need to grab that and grab that by faith and shout in there. Some of y'all have been looking at your life and it's been barren. It's been unproductive. But this is the season where God is about to touch your spiritual womb and things are about to come forth. Things are about to come forth. You need to just go ahead and say, come forth, come forth. Only half of y'all believe this. Only half of y'all is going to get it. When God said that he's going to bless your womb, that God is going to do something, we need to react by faith. Now, I understand that this is our first service. So we learning. But what it is that we want to continue to do, I'm learning. We do not want to miss opportunities to partner with what the Holy Spirit is saying that is being spoken over our life. Some of us are going to produce something from a barren place. And so Joseph comes forth. That was the first reason why he was favored. The second reason. And the second reason. The second reason is because his dad, he was given to his dad in old age. 
He was given to him in OA. So Joseph comes and he tells his brothers who hated him. He had this coat. It wasn't Versace, but it was something. And it had many colors on it. And his brothers hated him all the more because there was a marker on his life that where he went, it showed not only that he was favored, they knew about it. They could see it. They saw the tangible evidence that God, that his dad had favored him. And God is placing that on us right now. And so he comes to this dream and when he tells or he comes to them after with this dream and he tells them what God said to him. But hear me on this because I've been encouraging and I've been affirming. So I'm about to tell y'all, welcome to Blueprint Church, because the other thing that we do is we step on toes. So let me go ahead and, get, and keep it honest with you. The dream that Joseph had was from God, but he was too immature to interpret it. Sometimes, and for some of us in here, we have heard what God said, and we spoke about it incorrectly. That some of the things that God has spoken to you, the reason why it hasn't come to pass is because you're too immature for it to manifest yet. Y'all may, don't say amen, you can say out. Some of the things that are in our life that we have not gotten yet is not because we're not good enough. It's because we have not developed the mental fortitude or capacity to be able to handle that. I'm going to get to it in Genesis 50. But what I'm telling you is that God will give you a dream and God does not have to give you exactly what he said he would give you when he said that he would do it. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. So what happens is, is that Joseph goes to his brothers and what they decide to do, you know, they didn't do like my brothers do and just beat me up. What they decided to do is they tried to kill him. They threw him into a pit. From the pit, he was sold into slavery. From slavery, he, be, he rose to the top of the ranks in the house. And then he was betrayed and he was sent to prison. And from prison, he interpreted a dream. Woo! I'm about to go there. This is 11 o'clock service, so I can keep it real. Brielle, I'm going to keep it real with you. So in the, in, what happens is that in the prison, a man comes to him who was from the palace. He said, I had a dream and can't nobody interpret it. And Joseph, having gone through hell, high water, trial, tribulation, Dominique, and so much more. He said, I think I know what it means. He interprets the dream and he does it correctly. Why? Because Joseph's process had brought him into the humility to where he could see it as how God wanted to see it. Can I tell you something? That there's certain things in your life that over time, if you just give it a chance, you're going to be able to interpret it in the right time. Some of the reason why we're not where we're at, we just got to give it a little bit of patience. We got to give God a little bit of time to work out. That, pit, that prison, it taught him something. That pit, it taught him something. Slavery, it taught him something. Let's make it very practical. That relationship, it taught you something. You getting fired, it taught you something. That person cheating on you, it taught you something. You going broke, it taught you something. That bad investment deal, it taught you something. Those people talking about you, it taught you something. You getting beat up, it taught you something. Come on, I know everybody here can't fight. I know that. Somebody here got whooped before. Not me. <laughs> um, but listen, it taught you something. It taught you something. Joseph was able, he was able to interpret it at this point in time, not only because he got smarter, but because he was more developed. Him getting to the point of accuracy you getting to the point of stability, you getting to the point of success, you getting to the point of the next level of your relationship with Jesus, it could not be easy. Because when you get something too easy, you don't know how to steward it. I got 10 minutes. Joseph interpreted the dream. It got him promoted into the palace. Can I, can, 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 can I do this? The, him misinterpreting the dream, it sent him to prison. Him interpreting correctly, it sent him to the palace. The difference was his maturity and his level and his ability to discern and communicate. Because in his first dream, he was the star. In the second dream, he prioritized other people. Let me tell you something. If in the dreams and in the things that you see and the things that God has spoken to you, when you interpret your dream, I, I'll let you know if you interpret it incorrectly. If you are the biggest star in your story, 
It's too small. You're looking at it wrong. If you are the greatest beneficiary of what it is that God has placed on your life, if you only want to build a business so you get rich, you're doing it for the wrong problem. For the wrong reason. See, y'all don't, don't worry about it. I love tension. <laughs> if, if, if you only want to have a healthy marriage just so you can be happy and not to glorify God, it's the wrong reason. God is wanting to use you Use us, use Blueprint to do something that hence the title of our sermon series is bigger than me. That is bigger than you. And I am concerned with us as a people, with me, which I'll share about in a moment, that at times we miss what God wants to do, not because he did not want to do it, but because we were trying to make ourselves the beneficiary. And sometimes... God will make it tough. Sometimes you'll have to go through that pit. Sometimes you'll have to go through that betrayal. Sometimes you're going to have to learn a hard lesson. So you can interpret and you can steward correctly. I got three things that I want to tell you and then I'm going to get out your way. The first one is. The first one on why or when you're going through things to make a life that's bigger than yours, the first thing you have to do is embrace adversity. Somebody say embrace. What does that mean that you have to face it head on? Some of the reason uh, as to why we stay in situations and trials so long is not because that is hard, but because we run from adversity instead of running through it. God, Lord, help me. God, who is the greatest power, who is strong, he will fill you up and give you the fortitude, give you the strength, give you the strategy to face your oppositions. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Some of us see the weapon form and we don't want it no more. But our Bible tells us that he fights our battles for us. That's why he is the Lord of hosts. When you hear Uni, who is one, who is the most amazing. Can we give it up for our worship leader, Uni? That is my beautiful sister. Let me see. When she's up here and you feel like she's talking crazy and she's saying all these different names, those are the names of God. And at some point in time, when you come back, we're going to go over them and we're going to teach and we're going to talk about them. But the biggest thing that you need to know is that when you hear a name of God, it is not just something that people want to nickname him. Either you know this. It is referencing his character. So when she says Jehovah Jireh, my provider, nobody just made that up. It happened because they needed they were in a, in a place of lack and he provided and they named him that. So the thing is, is that everything that we're talking about, God will be your strength so when you face adversity what I'm telling you and tasking you today what I believe prophetically is that God is going to shift you and you'll no longer run from adversity but you'll run through it the second thing that we have to do is we have to hold on to the promise Joseph had the dream hear me when I say this the dream was right he was wrong God has spoken so many things over your life. He's spoken things over my life. He's spoken things over this church. He's spoken things over every musician. Everybody in here, hold on to the promise. Hebrews 10, 23 said, hold fast to the confession of our hope because he who promises is faithful. In the New Living Translation, it said that he who made a promise can be trusted. Can I just encourage you just really quickly for 20 seconds that if he said it, he'll do it. When I tell you that I'm standing up here and for me, this is not something that is just normal. It's not something that is just ordinary. This is crazy to me. I never thought that I'll be up here. But two years ago, seven years ago, when I was sitting and I was walking around my my neighborhood, I was living with my dad. I did not have a place to say I had no money. I was broke, busted and disgusted. I had nothing. I was in the most depressed state of my life. I was anxious. I was angry. I was all of the above. And I was walking because I thought that my life was going to go in a different direction. I had saw a vision, but I was too I was too immature to interpret it. I thought that I was going to be in a different place. And with tears in my eyes, I was praying, crying and doing a whole other thing, a whole bunch of other stuff. I was mad. And God told me you will fail at everything you do until you do what I ask you to do. I sat there. I have some of my former teammates in this place. I have people who've known me since I was a kid. It broke my heart. It broke everything inside of me because I knew what I had saw and it looked it looked real, but I saw it the wrong way. I saw it the wrong way. I thought that this was the second option. So with tears in my eyes, I made a commitment. I said, God, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. But hear me on this. When I said that I would do it, I had no idea how it was going to happen. So I went through my pit. I went through my 
prison. I went through my hard times. And we just said, God, we're going to do this. I held on to the promise. Some of y'all saw me. I was over there crying. And I don't cry. <laughs> I was crying. Because I sat here and I looked at everybody in this room and majority of y'all I do not even know. And to be honest with you, it didn't matter to me at that moment. The only thing that mattered to me is that he didn't lie. God did not lie to you. He did not lie to you. Now, some of the things for our disappointment is because we lied to ourselves and we blamed it on him. That's another sermon for another time. But let me tell you something. Don't believe me. Don't believe her. Believe him. He who promised is faithful. Joseph ended up exactly where he saw in the third thing and the last thing is you have to pass the test. I told you that this was a story of Joseph when he was speaking to his brothers, what I did not tell you is that his brothers were the one who sold him into slavery. His brothers were the one that wanted to kill him. His brothers lied to his dad. His dad went years, decades, not knowing that he was alive. That was his favorite son. And when he said this to them, it is because they came to him in need. There was a famine in the land and he was in Egypt no longer, no longer where they were in their homeland. He was in Egypt and they had to come to him and ask him. Can we borrow something? And they could not even recognize him because he had been developed. He had matured. He had went into a different place that they couldn't even recognize their own little brother. And when they found out it was him, they got scared. They said, for sure, he's going to kill us. He's the second most important person in, this, in Egypt. And he said, no. What you meant for evil, God meant it for good. If you can shift your mind to know that every bad thing that every hard thing, that every difficult thing, that everything that you thought was going to be your destruction was going to be your deliverance. That everything that you thought was going to hold you back was going to catapult you forward. If you knew that everything that you went through was going to make you better, you would hold on to the promise. Don't fail the test. Because hear me on this. When you get to that place, where you're in authority, when everything works out for your good, when the people that did you wrong come back and apologize, when the co-worker at work come back and say, oh, you got a promotion, when all these different things start happening, when the people at church, because this is church, so people do get messy, when the people behind you in the row, by the way, we don't do that here. When the people behind you, when you start figuring out that people are talking about you, X, Y, Z, how do you respond? What we're going to do as a church, what we're going to do as people, what we're going to make the declaration to do is to do what it said in Genesis 50 and 20. We're going to pass the test. Hey, listen, you know what? It don't even matter what you did. God meant it for evil. God, God meant it for good. This is the thing before I close. God said it could not be easy. This morning we walked into this place and everything was going crazy. We were expecting I don't know how many people. And I was mad. I was hot. I had been up all morning. People was running around. We was frustrated. I didn't know what I was going to preach. I didn't know what was going to happen. I almost had a panic attack this morning. Never had one in my life. Can I be real with y'all? And I'm sitting here in the, in, the, in the living room at 7 o'clock in the morning. My wife looks at me. She's like, what's wrong? I'm holding my chest. I said, I don't know what's going on. I can't figure out what God wants me to preach. I don't know what's going on. I, 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 th this wasn't what I saw. This was not what I saw. But we came in here and got on this stage with 15 minutes before we opened those doors. And God said, don't ever be so prideful that you think that you care about this church more than I do. In that moment. I was faced with my test. This didn't look like how I thought it would look, God. I didn't know what was going to happen. It should have been better than this. I, something should have happened. This is, this is difficult. And I went back into that room. And I thought about my pit. I thought about my prison. 
I thought about my tears. I thought about every word that God had spoken to me. And I had to make a decision to say, what am I going to believe? You have to make that decision. This is a church where we will not only prepare well, but we will respond well. It couldn't be easy. Because when it gets to the end, don't get me excited, Clint. <laughs> when it gets to the end, you will come forth as pure gold. Can I hear an amen? Listen to this. There's a couple things that I want to tell y'all before we close. How y'all feel? Y'all feel good? Okay. I know this 11 o'clock crowd. Y'all got to go get brunch and mimosas after this. I get it. <laughs> Check me out. Every time that you come here, you're going to get a different experience. The one thing that you always get is going to be authenticity. I would have loved to come in here and shout everybody down like you need to do all this type of stuff. But what God wanted today is he wanted to set some culture about who we are and what we're going to be about. So I'm going to just tell you right now, if you want to come here and feel good all the time, it ain't for you. But if you want to grow, if you want to become more like Jesus, if you want to build a big life, this is the place where you can be. I don't believe. Yeah, y'all go ahead and give it up. I don't believe that any of you are here on accident. I don't believe in coincidence. I believe that God tugged your heart. So there's three things I got to do. I didn't forget. There's three things I got to do before we leave. The first one is this. Everything we do is about Jesus. It's about Jesus. Jesus is found in every book. Jesus is the reason. So with every eye closed, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to know that today is your day. If you say, God, I don't, this Jesus that they talk about, it's a lot of people here. I just really came because I heard it was going to be some, you know, it was going to be fun. It was a new church. But God is tugging on your heart. And you might say, you know what, I have prayed that prayer before. I've been grew up in church, but I've never said, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord. That opportunity is today. Hey, I feel this strong. There's some people in this place that do not know the one we sing about. And it is not to be embarrassed. It is to take the opportunity. So if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you want to rededicate your life as your Lord and Savior today, can you just lift up your hand, every eye closed? I see the hands all over the room. Come on, baby, I see. I see hands all over the room. So listen, what we're going to do is I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want everybody just to say it with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you because you're good. I thank you for your love, and I thank you for your grace. I believe, say that like you mean it, I believe that Jesus Christ walked this earth, died for my sins, and rose with all power in his hand. Come into my life. You are Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all go ahead and give him some praise. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. You don't have to worry about separation from God. Oh, I'm about to get excited. I don't need to right now. You are sealed. And listen, you'll see this on the screen. If you prayed that prayer, or if you want to, we want you to text that. And it's not for any odd reason. It is simply because if you made that decision, we want to be able to walk this journey with you. There'll be some resources. There'll be some people reaching out to you about the decision that you made because it is the most important one. The three most important choices you'll ever make in your life is the God that you follow, the person that you marry, and the church that you go to. Don't miss that. The God that you follow, the person that you marry, and the church that you go to. Speaking of the church that you go to, we want to give people the opportunity to join our church. We are growing. God is doing some crazy things. This blows my mind. I'm going to cry all night, not in front of y'all, but I'm going to cry all night later to think about what God has done. If you want to be a part of this church, this amazing spiritual family, because you want to help build something bigger than you, I will tell you this. There's a lot of great churches. There's some past pastoral friends in here that I love with my dear heart. Those are safe people. Those are people that you should go to. If you want to come to a church 
like one of ours, if you want to be a part of Blueprint, you want to help build something bigger than you, this is the place. Speaking of that, should I tell him, John? Okay, so God just gave me our word for the year. If you were here in the first service, you heard it. But if not, God, two days ago, God gave me our word for the year. Every year, we will have a word that is what we hold on to. It is something that we believe that God has spoken. It is something that we'll believe in. And I was sitting there asking God. I was mad at God, if I can be honest. I'm sitting there like, man, God, why you ain't giving me the, year for, the word for 2024 and 2023? Like, I, you know, I got to be prepared. I got to know what's going on. And God said, I gave it to you two years ago. I said, no, you didn't. I, I didn't, I didn't hear nothing. I didn't write nothing down. He said, I gave it to you two days ago, or two years ago. Two years ago, he told me that our foundational verse was Ephesians 3.20. What it says in there, it says, now unto him. I'm about to run around here. Who is able to do. You know the word. Exceedingly, abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Over these last 12 months, God has done so many things. And on Tuesday, I was sitting in the room and he was like, I told you the word. I told you the word. And I said, I don't know. He said, look at everything that's happened over the last 12 months. And I said, OK, yeah. He said, I told you what I was going to do, but you didn't believe it. So our word for 2024. And you take this as a declaration from the Holy Spirit. If you join this church, if you're already a part of this church, our word for 2024 is unbelievable. God is going to do some things. That is going to blow our mind. This right here, 1,200 people in two services for a church that did not exist. So y'all, y'all not talking to me about this. 1,200, 1,300 people and there's people lined up outside that they had to turn around. Don't look at me. Look at the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. So I'm letting you know that if you come to Blueprint Church, something unbelievable is going to happen. I feel like preaching now. I've seen people healed of cancer. I've seen families change and shift. I've seen marriages restored. So I'm letting you know right now. If you desire to experience, see, encounter here beyond this and help facilitate the unbelievable blueprint is your church blueprint is your church after i pray uh jai where you want to go you want to stay seated on the corner okay if you want to join this church if you feel called to join this church we're going to pack up that section in that corner. I know you're like the, it's the section in the club. Y'all just go ahead and pack that up. Y'all don't mind being in the section where y'all got the hookah and everything. We can go up there. So we're going to head up there. If that packs out, we can just stay right here. And then lastly, I'm not going to miss it. We, are oh, they trying to tell me? We are a generous church, so it's giving time. Somebody shout. Well, they don't know. It's the first time. So listen, we're a generous church, so we get excited about giving. We don't make money funny. It's giving time. I bet. Listen, if you want to give, you can give the blueprint. If you brought your launch day seeds from our builders tonight or today is the time that you sow it. If you want to give, you can click the uh, QR code. You can text give to BP to 77977 or if you're old school and you want to drop and you have cash you want to give physically we have an offering bucket that you can drop that in at the end listen we are a generous church and i'm excited for how y'all been generous already i love y'all so much i'm gonna pray let's stand i'm gonna pray us out and we gone i do everything okay let's do this let's do this this is new this is exciting and this is amazing I'm just taking a mental image of this. Heavenly Father, the great I am, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, my Savior, the author and the finisher of our faith, redeemer, restorer, defender, protector, Jesus. We thank you. I thank you for this time. I thank for these people. I thank for everybody in this room. I thank for those who gave their life to you. I thank for those who are going to join this family. I thank you for those, God, who just came to support. God, I pray that you would bless them. 
Bless this church. Bless this family. Help us make the kingdom better. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give favor to you. I love you all so much. Thank you for being a part of Blueprints History. And this is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen.